Oh, you do look pale, Lizzie. Why did you have some breakfast? I'm sure it will do you good. No, no, I'm well, Charlotte. I think I've stayed indoors too long. Fresh air and exercise is all I need. The woods around Rosings are so beautiful at this time of year. Miss Bennett. Mr. Darcy. I've been walking the grove some time in the hope of meeting you. Will you do me the honor of reading this letter? This, madam, is a faithful narrative of all my dealings with Mr. Wickham, and for its truth I can appeal to the testimony of Colonel Fitzwilliam, who knows every particular of these transactions. I know not under what form of falsehood Mr. Wickham imposed himself on you, but I hope you will acquit me of cruelty towards him. I found as the time drew near that I'd better not meet with Mr. Darcy. Scenes might arise unpleasant to more than myself. The other charge leveled at me is that regardless of the sentiments of either party, I detached Mr. Bingley from your sister. I have no wish to deny this, nor can I blame myself for any of my actions in this matter. I had not long been in Hertfordshire before I saw that Bingley admired your sister, but it was not until the dance at Netherfield that I suspected a serious attachment. His partiality was clear, but though she received his attentions with pleasure, I did not detect any symptoms of peculiar regard. The serenity of her countenance convinced me that her heart was not likely to be easily touched. Insufferable presumption! I did not believe her to be indifferent because I wished it. I believed it on impartial conviction. Oh, very impartial. You have missed the two gentlemen that came to take their leave. Mr. Darcy came here. Well, yes, but he went away again directly, but the Colonel waited for you for over half an hour. And now they are both gone out of the country. Oh, I dare say we shall be able to bear the deprivation. As to my objections to the marriage, the situation of your family, though objectionable, was nothing in comparison with the total want of propriety so frequently betrayed by your mother your younger sisters, and even occasionally, your father. That will do extremely well, child. You have delighted us long enough. Now, there will be a great marriage. And you know that will throw the girls into the path of other rich men. My friend left Netherfield for London on the following day. There I engaged in the office of pointing out to him the certain evils of his choice of your sister as a prospective bride. It was not difficult to convince him of your sister's indifference to him. I cannot blame myself for having done thus much. For destroying all her hope of happiness? Yes, I'm sure you do not blame yourself, hateful man. There is but one part of my conduct in the affair on which I do not reflect with satisfaction. <laughs> really astonish me. That is, that I concealed from him your sister's being in town. Perhaps this concealment was beneath me. It is done, however, and it was done for the best. On this subject, I have nothing more to say and no other apology to offer. Sufferable! 